Welcome to Ask a Pastor, the podcast where you can ask the pastor, well, anything. In this episode, Pastor Chip Stevens is joined by one of the ministry team at First Baptist Jackson to answer your questions. Now, let's join Chip and his guests in the studio. Welcome to this episode of the Ask a Pastor podcast. Today I have Mike Carlin, our Associate Pastor of Worship with us. And Mike, we've been given a great question. Uh, it's a question I... Love it. I, I mean, I love it too. I, I love when people ask questions like the one I'm going to sh- uh, ask you. And the question is, who is your favorite character in the Bible and why? So I'm assuming that Jesus is is not, he's off the table here because he well, would have to let's be. Let's just all agree that he's number one. He's so number let's, one. let's go to we'll the next one. That. Right, that's right. But my second one is an Old Testament character. And he's, he's kind of an obscure person in some ways, even though there's a book named after him. But, uh, and it would be Ezra. Hmm. Now, Ezra was not a prophet. He was a scribe and a priest. The Bible's very clear about that. But uh, it's interesting how I stumbled onto Ezra, and I've been studying him for about 15 years now. I mean, I, I, I have studied a lot about Ezra, and there's so much more that I don't know. But, but um, what turned me on to studying about Ezra was studying out the, one of the great worship chapters in all of the Bible, which is Nehemiah chapter 8. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows the Nehemiah story, mm-hmm. rebuilding of the walls. But in Nehemiah 8, the walls are completed, and the nation gathers at the water gate, and they have a, this incredible worship service. It's a great, great example of worship uh, in the Bible. And but in the studying of Nehemiah eight, the great worship chapter, you are introduced to the leadership of Ezra, hmm. who led that service that day. And that made me want to go back into the book of Ezra and right. find out more about Ezra, and found out that Ezra, the priest and the scribe, during the era of when the earliest manuscripts of of Old Testament date back to when Ezra was scribed. And one of those manuscripts, the manuscripts of the Psalms, dates back to the time of Ezra. Hmm. Ezra was the leader of the second wave of exiles right. back to Jerusalem. And the Psalter goes back to that time, which gives us reason to believe that Ezra very likely is the person who assembled the book of Psalms. Hmm. We don't know that for 100%, right. but he was there when it was happening. And right. he's the one that brought it forward. And so, and in the bringing forward of the book of Psalms, the fifth book of the Psalms includes the Psalms of Ascent. Mm -hmm. And so Ezra would have been the guy leading the second wave of exiles back, studying Psalms 120 through 134, the Psalms of Ascent. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to look and look at the early manuscripts of 1st and 2nd Chronicles, and Ezra is referred to in the extra biblical records as the chronicler, Mm -hmm. if if that's a word. Mm -hmm. So very likely, although the books themselves don't name him as author, Ezra is very likely the person that wrote First and Second Chronicles. So if he wrote First and Second Chronicles, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, and assembled the Psalms, well, guess what? He's second only to the prophet Isaiah and Moses in contributing to the Old mm. Testament. Mm. But you don't think of Ezra that way. So here's why I love Ezra and have studied him all my life. He led worship as a priest and a scribe. And he led worship as someone who really cared about music and the Psalms. Yeah. And I figure if Ezra is that kind of guy, I probably ought to get to know him. And, uh, <laughs> and I've spent a lot of time trying to get to know the person, Ezra. I can't wait to meet him face to face when we get there. Yeah. You know, my, my guy is Joshua. It's also yeah. my favorite book in the Bible. And the reason that Joshua is, is so uh, important to me is because when I was called as pastor at First Baptist Biloxi, I was actually studying the book of Joshua. Hmm. And the book of Joshua begins with the transition between Moses, the most influential leader in the history of Israel, to Joshua, who had been the right-hand man of Moses through the wilderness experience. And it was actually as I was reading that, that I knew God was calling me to be the Mm. pastor. And I was following my mentor, hero, Dr. Frank Gunn, who in in my opinion, greatest leader I've ever been around and and just want to be just like him one day. And as I was reading that, you know, I began to realize that this is okay. This is what God's calling me to do. But when you look at Joshua's life, 
you see how God prepared him for the assignment that he had in ways that he had absolutely yeah. no idea. Yeah. I mean, you think about things such as uh, when Moses was up on the mount and the people were down below sinning with the golden calf, Moses is making his way down and he's having to deal with that sin. Well, he, Joshua is right there. He is. And so Joshua is able to see how Moses yeah. deals with sin. And then you look in the book of Joshua, and one of the first things that Joshua has to do is deal with sin in the camp. Well, he learned that from Moses. Well, sure. yeah. And just over and over again. Uh, another, uh, when, when Moses was, Moses realized that God's purpose for Israel was bigger than him and his leadership, and Moses is passing the baton to Joshua. You see at the end of the book of Joshua that Joshua mm -hmm. is passing the baton yeah. to the elders, the leaders of Israel, as he calls them all together with yeah. that great passage, choose for this day whom you yeah. will serve, but it's for me and my house who will serve the Lord. Yeah. Joshua realized that what God was doing with Israel was much bigger than him and yeah. his leadership. And he just had a role to play. Yeah. But you see how God provided him for the assignment, and as he's obeying God and doing what God called him to do, then he's able to kind of realize how God had been preparing him. That's so cool. And well, so you see Joshua walk with God, and it just it, it just yeah. comes to life. I, I see your Joshua, and I'll give you my Ezra again yeah. in this way. And isn't that cool to see that there's yeah. some common things about right. Ezra and Joshua? Here's something about Ezra I want to throw back in, and then I'll let you finish up with Joshua. Yeah. Uh, there was a phrase that Ezra uses about Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah that talks about God's hand resting on Nehemiah. It says, the gracious hand of the Lord was upon him. Mm. Well, that phrase first appears in the book of Ezra about Ezra. Mm. And it says, the gracious hand of the Lord was upon him because, and in the book of Ezra, we get three reasons God's hand rested on Ezra's life. And the three are, he knew the law of God, Mm. Number one. Number two, he obeyed its precepts. And number three, he taught it, and he taught its ordinances in Israel. Mm. Knowing God's Word, uh, obeying God's Word, teaching God's Word. And because those three things were true of Ezra, God's hand rested on his life. Mm. And I call it the Ezra promise. If we will know his Word, do his Word, and teach his Word, the hand of God will rest on what we're doing and uh, Ezra's my guy. I hope yeah. I live up to that. Yeah. I hope I well, lived up to that. And so I get to talk about you Joshua do. again. You close it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just a couple of things. One is, is, is I love there in Joshua chapter 1 where, you, you know, there's nothing to indicate that Joshua wanted to be the leader. Yeah. There's everything to indicate that he was yeah. satisfied being the right-hand man to Moses. Yeah. God called him. He didn't ask for that assignment. Yeah. And, and, and I just picture Joshua being so nervous uh, worried about how he's going to step into those shoes and, and be the next person. But God says, listen, don't I've given you the law. Yeah. You don't depart from the left to the right. You keep your eyes on me. You be strong and yeah. courageous is the, is the famous passage. Keep your eyes on me and I will take care of everything. And Joshua did that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Mike, to me, the best thing said about Joshua in the Bible is actually what's left unsaid mm. about Joshua in the Bible. Mm. And that is when you fast forward to Hebrews and the chapter of the heroes oh, of yes. the faith. That's so good. You, you, you see all of these heroes, and then it comes to the time of Joshua, and what the writer of Hebrews says is he talks about the people walking around the city of Jericho, doesn't name Joshua. <laughs> How about that? And so Joshua, so it, that Joshua was kind of, well, yeah, Joshua was kind of no. the transition from the man is a leader to God leading the people, and Joshua was, was one of the people. And so to me, the best thing said about him is what's left unsaid in Hebrews because he, he got that it was the people of God following so God good. as he led them. So listen, you know I, something? Oh, me, yeah, I want to throw ahead. this in. All right. Something our church got to experience recently when, when Mississippi College was conferring the doctorate on you right. is we had Moses and Joshua. Dr. Gunn was there, <laughs> yeah. and he prayed that prayer. What a special moment in your yeah. life, and a picture for us to see no kidding. how God does it, how yep. God does it. When After Dr. Thompson had presented that, Dr. Gunn comes and prays. Our church got to see a, a kind of a shadow of mm. what God had done in your life. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. awesome. That's, it is that's awesome. That's a beautiful picture. It is awesome. Yeah. And listen, I, I want to say to you, you know, to me personally, and, and Mike probably would say the same thing, but there's lots of different ways to study the Scripture. 
And for me, one of my favorite ways to study the Scripture is to do a character study. Mm -hmm. To begin at the first mention of an individual such as Joshua and to read all of the passages about Joshua leading up to the book of Joshua and then reading all the way through that chapter. There's something about looking to see how God uh, intersects the life of an individual and how he shapes that individual to fit the assignment that he has for him. And when you kind of have the opportunity to look from the outside in at how God is working in the life of somebody, then it kind of helps you realize how God's working yeah, in your life as right. well. That's and so, good. again, great question. Thank you so much for submitting that. And please continue to submit your questions. We love answering them each and every week. And hope to see you again at the next Ask a Pastor podcast. Have a great week. Do you have a question to ask a pastor? You can send it to us by visiting firstbaptistjackson.org slash APP or message us on social media. You can find us at FBJacksonMS on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and share it. Thanks again for joining us for Ask a Pastor.